Happy Saturday, folks. Check that thing out. Aztec gold. It's a pretty good color. I'm getting ready to do some mixes here in the studio and um, got to dial a few things in and it got me thinking. Is there anything worse than spending, you know, a day's worth of time and energy sculpting, obsessing, crafting the perfect mix and getting things just exactly how you want them in your head. Everything is sounding good in your home studio, in front of your reference monitors that you spend all your time listening to. Things sound so great. And then you bounce a mix, print a mix, however you handle your mixes, and you get out in the car. Or maybe you're listening to it on your phone. Hopefully you're not with anyone else bragging about how good your mix is before you play it and you realize that your mix does not translate to the other devices that you're listening to. Thank the heavens above that SonarWorks has cracked the code on how we can get those same kind of great, consistent mixes that are going to sound great, whether we're listening to them on an iPhone or in the car or anywhere else. And what I'm talking about, what we're going to be talking about in this video is the SonarWorks. Turn this thing around. The SonarWorks Sound ID Reference Software. Let's go check it out. All right, so let's talk briefly about what it is that causes our mixes to not translate on these other devices. Typically, it's one of two things. It's either that our rooms aren't treated properly, which is very common for a home studio scenario, and or that we are using reference monitors that do not have a flat EQ frequency response that are giving us true representations of how things sit in our mixes when we're mixing. So we're listening in on our reference monitors, they sound great in our room, and then we get on another device and they sound completely off. Ultimately, what the SonarWorks uh, Sound ID reference software does is it reverse engineers the process. So instead of you needing to have a, uh, a company come in like they do on these commercial uh, recording studios and treat your room and spend thousands and thousands of dollars that you don't have or you know, buying six grand worth of uh, reference monitors to mix on, it's going to reverse engineer that whole process and it's going to calibrate your speakers to the room so that what you're hearing, it's accounting for any uh, imbalance in the distance between the speakers or any other flaws in the treatment acoustically of your room to uh, come up with basically an overlay that you'll be able to set on a plug-in or system-wide so that what you're hearing is actually what's in the mix and you can uh, make adjustments so that it's gonna sound good on whatever it is you're playing it on. So the very first thing that you're going to need to do if you don't already own the SonarWorks Sound ID reference software is you're going to need to go purchase it. I left a link in the description below for you to go pick that up. Once you have the uh, software and the microphone in hand, and you will want to go to sonarworks.com and create an account. You'll want to register your software and uh, put in your activation code. And it's going to prompt you to download the app to your computer, either a Mac or a Windows machine. And uh, that should be pretty self-explanatory. I'll let you do that on your own. Once you have completed all of those steps and you have the app up in front of you, I will meet you over at the desk so we can get these speakers calibrated. And we're going to be using this SolarWorks calibration microphone. So this is the thing that you need. If you know someone that's already got one of these, you might as well see if you can borrow it from them. You don't want to have to buy one of these. I mean, let's get real. It's going to walk you through the whole prompts of all this stuff. So. It will uh, have you move things out of your way because we're going to be moving around over here. And it's basically going to walk you around the perimeter of where you sit, where your listening position is, where you mix. It's going to measure the distance between each one of those speakers. It's going to create a profile where it's going to compensate for all of that within the app. And you'll be able to switch back and forth. If you have multiple speakers, you can do that. And you can also switch back and forth between different modes. All right, you have a couple of options uh, of how you want to set this mic up. So one is that you sit at your uh, mixing position and then you take the mic and you set it up right here at ear height. And then you stand up and you get a gauge of where that is on your body. So mine's about shoulder height. 
and I can move around the room and do that at shoulder height. Or I'm just gonna get a straight mic stand and raise it up to the level of exactly where it needs to be so that I'm getting a consistent uh, representation of uh, where my listening area is as I move around this perimeter and get these uh, these readings, this calibration. All right, so let's get this chair moved out of the way and I think that's basically gonna be it and we will get this party started. All right, so I've got my microphone here. There you see that. We've got the app pulled up. Launch. Our speakers have been calibrated and we have the plug put in on our master fader. So this is how I keep mine set up. You could certainly do it system wide, but I find that just keeping it on my master fader allows me to easily bypass this if I wanna just hear the focals and how what their natural EQ curve is. You'll notice here that I have my solo B6s chosen and I save those as a preset and you can do the drop down here. All right, so this is a great place where you could add a set of headphones. If you mix on headphones, this would be a great place to put those. Uh, also, if you have another set of speakers, so I'll do my Oratones at some point here in the next day or two. But um, for now, this is gonna work great for me. Also, you'll notice down here, and I referenced this before, uh, these are our different target modes. So it's living in flat right now. It's always best to mix on a flat EQ cursor. So everything is standing out. You're not getting any uh, artificially enhanced EQ frequency ranges. Is that right to say? Yeah, I think that's a good way of saying it. There's also a setting for Dolby if you're mixing an Atmos, which is cool. You can set a custom target if you wanted that. And then you can do a translation check. What's cool about the translation check, this is where you'll probably spend a lot of your time as you start using this. So with the uh, translation check, you can see it's set to mix cubes now, like the Oratones. So if you don't have money for Oratones, this is a great way to just, well, let's take a listen and see. So that's flat. And if we want to do uh, the mix cubes, it's just the mids, right? Which is cool because we want to be able to uh, hear the mids and that's a great place to start doing a mono mix on a mix cubes. That's what I do with the Oratones. Uh, but what's also cool about this is if you click this, you can see there's a lot of different stuff here. So uh, three different car modes that you can be in to give you an idea of what your mix is gonna sound like inside of a car. Uh, You've got settings for AirPods and headphones and all of that kind of stuff in here, which is cool. Uh, laptops, smartphones, different types of studio speakers, NS11s. We can assume that that is to replicate Yamaha NS10s, TVs. You know, I don't know how differently the Japanese 46 inches versus the Korean 60 inch, but it gives you some uh, different things to uh, consider. And uh, that's really great when you're listening to a mix and you're trying to A-B things and get uh, your head wrapped around like maybe some holes in your mix. This software is not super cheap, but if you're working off of a set of reference monitors that you like the way that they sound overall globally on all the things that you listen to on, maybe you listen to Spotify, YouTube, on that computer, maybe you're not always mixing music on those speakers. This is gonna give you the ability to continue to use the reference monitors that you own and love and to also have a lot more functionality out of them so you can get your mixes dialed in and save you from having to buy a new set of uh, reference monitors. Also save you from having to waste time and money trying to perfectly professionally treat your room if you're not in a position to do that. And there you have it, the Sonarworks Sound ID Reference Software. As always, if there's anything that you have questions about, drop me a comment and I will meet you there. If you've made it to the end of this video, I'm going to ask you to smash the like button. It helps this channel more than you know, and I really appreciate it. 
if you're not subscribed to the channel, now would be a great time to hit the subscribe button, turn your notifications on, so hey, you get notified when the videos come out. I'm Justin Brogdon. Until next time, you guys keep doubling down and keep making great music. I'll be seeing you in the next one. Peace.